weekly uplifting show to support you, make you laugh, or just be the thing you need to hear at this time in your life. And now, here's Joni Winberg and Steve Peck. Well, here we are on our very first Google Hangout that Joni set up. Are you there, Joni? Yes, I am. Can you hear me okay? Earth to Joni. This is <laughs> so high tech, I don't even know what we're doing. Well, we're hoping... What are we doing? We're actually live and on the air, and this will be on YouTube, and people can see us, and, and we'll work it all out so people know <laughs> how to join us. <laughs> I think when I started, you know, we didn't know how to really start, and I said... You know, you give me a three, two, one count, then I'll start the music. And uh, it's kind of like seeing behind the scenes in radio because you're not always, you don't know what's going on. But, uh, you know, you hear the music when you're listening to a podcast. You don't know that the hosts are sitting there and doing whatever they're doing. I kind of saw you motioning to me like, no, we're on the air. <laughs> we might have had a little delay on starting, so it might be uh, two seconds into the music, but that's okay. We're rookies, we're learning, but you know, our, our big pick, the big picture is that we're so excited to have people see us live, get to know us even more, and be able to then join us and ask questions right here. So that's the intent. Well, maybe you're more excited about people seeing you live than I am <laughs> seeing me live. Uh, you're I'm, cute. I'm not, Why not? You're not cute. quite used to that. People have heard me talk for so long about this alopecia thing, and now they're going, oh, my God. Look at it. It's Mr. Clean. <laughs> I need to get an Steve. earring, though. I need, to, I need to work that through. But, Steve, you're so cute. You'll be fine. Oh, you're too, too nice, Joni. <laughs> and people, for the first time, are able to get a look at your log cabin, although I notice... You've closed your back door, which uh, normally gives us the nice view of the fireplace and things like that. But this is the um, this is her log cabin house where you hear the birds chirping from the open window in front of her. I even shut the window because you know what? We are actually in our 60s today out here versus yeah. high 80s, low 90s, and dripping. I remember last week I was just coming out of the pool. I was so hot and dripping and now it's like okay I need a sweater on you know it's so opposite today but I'll take it's, it it's, it's very refreshing yeah I mean I guess it's good at night but it's just very strange to have a, a warm day and have it get so cold so quickly at night I know it's like a 20 30 degree difference but anyways we're here for you for our listeners we had some great um, feedback from people last week we had a fabulous guest Kevin joined us and gave us his point of view on things, and we were trying. You were you were being great in the coaching end of it, Steve. Oh, I was <laughs> really very direct. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Um, I don't know. I, I don't have that gentle nature that you do. I I would. I'm more kind of like kick Bottom him in the line. pants and get him going. <laughs> Bottom liner. Yeah. I can certainly get that way. My kids have said to me, if mom gets that look of no discussion on her face and in her tone of her voice, you you either better run or you better hide or you just best be good. <laughs> you best be good. Best be good. You had to have some kind of defense when you were a, a single mom, you know, because you were a dad, you were a mom, and, you know, they know that I love them to pieces, but, you know, there were times you had to have that look to make them toe the line. Well, I think moms are always really this take charge because they have to be with their kids all the time. Did we talk about this before? Because, you know, a lot of times dads come home and the mm -hmm. uh, the wives are telling them what to do and they don't even realize that they're doing it. They're so used to telling kids what to do all day long that now they start talking to the husband like a kid. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I don't think we've ever talked about this. No. But I mean, but, you do know what I mean, that moms are always, you know, they have to make all these decisions and they're telling the kids, don't do this, do this now, come over here and uh, husband. Well, I, I remember in, in my generation where the mom would say, you wait till your father gets home. And then I felt bad for the guy. All of a sudden he hasn't seen the kids all day and then the mom right. tells them what they did wrong and then the father was supposed to discipline them that's tough. It's like, you know what, do it then and there, be done with it, be over with it. When the father gets home, have a great time. Be happy to see each other versus, okay, 
little Joey was a bad boy. You need to spank him. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. We're the executioner. You know, it's like you wait till your father gets home. He's <laughs> but you know what? Him. Isn't it different though? Because women and men are both working. It seems like just almost as many hours. Uh, yeah, I think so. So that way, it might be the mom coming home and the dad home was is home first, having to discipline or work with the kids. But you know, I, I don't know that you're hearing dads go, wait till mom gets home. No, they don't. They just do it. They wait. <laughs> yeah. They just do it. And why shouldn't the woman just do it? It's like, you know what? But, to, that, but I remember hearing my mom say that. So it must have just been a generation thing because it doesn't make, doesn't make any sense to me. Does it to mm -hmm. you? Um, no. It's rude to guys. You know, we don't want to be the bad guy. Well, you're usually the you're usually the fun loving guy, and the kids look to you for the fun, and the woman ends up being the heavy. I remember oh, yeah. I always felt like the heavy. <laughs> Speaking of heavy, when I was a little boy, went to the doctor's office, and I was with my grandma, and she's checking out, and she's talking uh, back and forth to the nurse at the counter, and I'm getting frustrated, and I said, "Come on, fat, so let's go." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um. Oh, my God. I mean, guess where I went when I got home. I mean, like, under the bed, because I was waiting for Dad to get home. Oh, so you were more scared of your dad than your mom. Well, it's like you said. He was just the executioner. He was the guy that, that got to do it. And um, that was back in the day when we had ritualistic spankings, right? They would take yeah. your pants down, put you over their knee, and swat you a couple of times on your bare bottom. I remember my dad had a strap, a leather strap, and he would say, do you want the solid end or the five-finger end? <laughs> <laughs> nice of him. At least he didn't ask, do you want the buckle end? Do you want the buckle end? Today, we would be in jail <laughs> or on the news. Right. Oh, yeah. I remember uh, when I was in shop class, um, we had, my teacher's name was Mr. Crow, and I thought it would be funny uh, in the back of the shop to, to do a crow call. You know, I was like, ah, ah, or whatever it was, you know, and, and um, he had one of those boards with the holes in it, and I had to bend down and hold my ankles while I got whacked. I mean, that's crazy. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Can you imagine that happening today? Oh, my goodness. Wow. So I, I never realize the teachers hitting that wasn't that long ago that's the same era of no. me yikes I remember my dad saying that the nuns used to spank them yeah but that was back way back so but wow even in the late 60s early 70s no that must have been mid 60s well let's not date ourselves I know. Tony I mean, it was a mere few years ago at best. That's okay. My memory recalls. That's that's about it, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how do you like being on the uh, the view of seeing us on the live? I'm not so sure, I, you know, because I'm not sh so sure what's going out over the air. I don't know if the camera automatically switches back and forth or, or what it does. Um. I don't know how we could get ourselves split screen. Yes, um, there is a way to do a split screen, and I'm learning on that, but probably not right now. Okay. So right now it's on me. That would be good because at moments, um, like on a past show, when I mentioned to our guests that um, second and third babies just fall out, I thought that <laughs> a split screen would have showed your jaw drop. <laughs> you know, right now I'm actually on the screen, but there is a way to do split screen. But you know, it's like, all right, we're going to test the waters a little bit later. So well, this, you've been, this, you've actually been on the camera this whole time. How lucky you are! I'm not so sure because you've been on my camera all this time. Okay, if you do see, there's a blue box. Right, right. now, it's on me, and then it needs to be set up so that. You're right now on the blue box, so that means that people would see you. Hmm. I'm not so sure, but um, okay. this gives me the opportunity to promote the coconut water I was talking about. Yes. Can you see that? Still drinking it. Taste Nirvana. It's the best in the so world. So have you found that it's really, really helping? 
I mean, you see makes you pee a lot. <laughs> it definitely does. Well, what's the difference? I mean, what what is what's the it benefit? It tastes like a really good sweet coconut. How many calories? A hundred. We talked about that. Oh, and that's and right. actually, I've had some uh, listeners write and they said, "We tried it. We loved it." So, um, you know, who knows? Maybe our first sponsor is Taste Nirvana. What are the benefits, though? You, you, I remember you saying it just gave you lots of great energy. Well, it's, uh, you know how people drink Gatorade and they drink oh. other um, hydration drinks? Mm -hmm. This is supposed to be nature's hydration drink, and it's supposed to be better than Gatorade and um, more potassium than even a banana. So it's like 700 milligrams That's of potassium, right. which is huge. That's right. You said that. So anything you want to talk about specifically that could help our listeners today, Steve? Um, not specifically. You know me. That's not me. I uh, I like to talk about anything. I let you any handle the coaching. You're the one that, that directs it. I'll, I'll tell you a story about a, a nice person, though. Okay. And um, it's, um, it's Miguel Cabrera. And uh, we know Miguel uh, as the uh, Triple Crown winner, if you're a baseball fan. If you're not, he's one of the, the better baseball players today. And he's a, he's a really great guy. He's helped out at... Uh, the, the charity that I run, and um, I've dealt with a lot of professional athletes in the past, and a lot of them go out and do these public appearances because they kind of feel they have to. And, uh, I mean, we're talking about guys that are 26, 29, 35, young people that are making maybe $60 million a year, some more than that. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that changes people. But... Um, we are giving Miguel an award for helping us. He comes to our, out to our field, and for those that don't know, I run a field uh, for children with special needs. It's a million-dollar baseball field, synthetic turf uh, surface, so wheelchairs and walkers can get around. And Miguel comes out, and beyond donating money, which he does personally as well, uh, he comes out and spends time, and that's like to me the the best thing that they can possibly do Absolutely. is give back of their time. And so uh, we have our 10th anniversary coming up, and I mentioned that uh, we're going to be giving an award out. And I certainly didn't expect to hear back from anyone. Uh, in fact, Miguel hurt himself the other night, and he's not even playing. But I got a call uh, on my way to do the show from uh, the, his friend, the guy that runs his foundation now. And he said, uh, you know, Miguel uh, is planning on coming out to accept the uh, the award. That's, I mean, that, it's a it's a little trophy we're giving him, but I mean, that, I mean, this is a guy that, that gets it. Fabulous. Being, uh, yeah. He so, gets it. do you know what I'm saying though? That money. Well, maybe we don't know because we don't have the money to be changed. But well, not uh, the millions. But you know what? To me, he gets it. He really does get it. That's fabulous. And uh, on the same topic of baseball, last night I was going around my Netflix and I watched their, there's a documentary series called 30 on 30. And they had the documentary of your team, the Boston Red Sox, from back in the year oh. 2004. That's when and, we won the World Series. Right, and I forgot how exciting that was. I forgot that you guys were down three games and three that games no the, other team yeah, had three, come back games. before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember that. I remember staying up to 12, 30, 1 o'clock, right to the end, and right. we really thought it was all over completely. You know, and then you know they won one. Okay, well, it was staying alive, and then they won the second one, and then wow! I mean, to have come back, to have that kind of comeback, and to win the World Series is just amazing. Yeah, for sure. And how good was Ortiz? Oh, I know. I mean, he was the guy that was uh, kept hitting the home runs, and I mean, he was amazing. And then um, Johnny Damon. Yes, who Johnny was then? Damon was, he was traded to the Yankees not a few years later. Right. That was like, oh my God, you get traded to the Yankees when you were from Boston, and Never. and they made him cut his hair. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> That's uh, that's an interesting thing about the New York Yankees that they've always had that clean cut rule in effect, which is you know I don't know, what do you think? Not a bad idea. I kind of like long hair, so what can I say? <laughs> really? Does your son have long hair? <laughs> he used to. He used to. I I like long hair. I I like the clean cut beard. Oh well, you love me. <laughs> <laughs> 
There's no <laughs> stuff marks I mean, from me. I, I don't mind that, you know. I mean, I dated a lot of guys who had a like kind of a. I don't know. You probably know the description of them, where they're just a. What do you call it? Not a full beard. What do you call it when it's just really short, but here and then it's. I think they still have like a like goatee. That. Yeah, something like that. Well, that's kind of what I used to have. I mean, I used to have, it was just a mustache and... But it would come down the, still the whole side. No, I, no, I didn't do that. Yeah, yeah. Those were like lamb chops. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they? That's like hillbilly lamb chops. Yeah, I got them, them Elvis chops that come down here. <laughs> or the kind that come down here and then go over here. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's a good look. Yeah, like the oh. mulligan. Hmm. I, I liked I liked it. It's uh, it seems um, I don't know. It just seems earthy, crunchy. I guess that's what I am, right? Earthy, crunchy. So you're earthy, crunchy girl. <laughs> um, what's going on in your earthy, crunchy world of helping transform people's lives? I tell you, it's really we've. I'll have some exciting news soon. We've joined some very large organizations. For the single again now what mentoring program, so we're really excited about that. You and can't mention the organizations, or you can't tell what you're doing. Uh, well, we've joined forces and we're putting press releases together. I'm really excited. It's going to because the dream, the vision is for people to really be aware of the tools that they have available for themselves after divorce to be the best parent they can be to help get it all together hmm. and I'm all about tools as I've mentioned before all about tools so we're really excited about the different groups that we're connecting with and be some press releases and PR so it just happened within the last few days so that's the new news congratulations see if you stick with things long enough you get her done hmm. They, have another, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, they're just excited to help. You know, these groups are just excited to help make that difference as well. So we're on the same page. Good. Um, I have a quick camera question again. If if you say that I'm on screen all the time, which I definitely don't want to be all the time, don't you have a control on your end where you can switch who's on? Well, uh, something just happened that it is switching us now automatically for whoever is talking. Oh. That's so good. it's it's perfect the way it is. I'm not touching anything. It it should be doing that so that if I'm talking, I'm on. If you're talking, you're on. So right now is perfect. All right. So I don't know what we're going to do with this technology, Joni. I mean, <laughs> we need to get people on board and they need to come on with us. That's with questions. Did you get any questions this week from your group? You know what? I haven't even looked. I am I, I am so yeah. behind in, in emails. And that's a problem in life. When you get a thousand emails down, how do you get back? I read an article, and, and there is a whole uh, arena for speaking and seminars, how to manage the flow of information today. Oh, absolutely. Because um, I remember reading somebody talking about declaring um, – email bankruptcy that's what they were calling it um, and and that just meant they got so far behind that they just said I'm deleting everything and I they sent out a, an email to everyone on their list and they said look I I just got overwhelmed and I if you wrote me I didn't get it you're gonna need to send again if it's mm -hmm. we because, dealt the junk yeah, I mean, you could spend, I could spend uh, a good three hours a day doing nothing but just reading email, going through it, then voicemail. Well, what we should probably do is have a certain way that people can get the emails to me. If So if you can't get to them, then I could read them. Yeah, or write us through Facebook. That would be the best, better way that, right? so that we can stay right on top of it. Speaking of bankruptcy, though, what's up with Detroit? Mm. Wow, I told you it was bad around here. Wow. I mean, imagine that, a city going bankrupt. And, I mean, this city is horrible. And when I say this city, I mean downtown Detroit, mm -hmm. not the suburbs. Our suburbs are as nice as anyone's and as affluent as anyone's, as affluent as Boston or, you know, wherever. 
You know, it's it's just a shame that mismanagement over the years downtown, I mean, the mentality of the people that ran downtown. I mean, uh, you know that uh, Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick uh, is in prison, right? I mean, he was indicted on all these uh, racketeering charges as when he was mayor. And it all broke uh, loose because he was having an affair uh, with uh, one of the girls he worked with. It was the sexting uh, scandal. And, uh, well, they started looking into the, all of the text messages, and they learned, oh, man, there's a lot of stuff going on. He was uh, doing deals with contractors. If you pay me a million dollars, I'll let you get a contract, that kind of stuff. And, um, I mean, with everybody's hand, I mean, there were a lot of other people that went away too, people that were on uh, the uh, city council. So, I mean, when looked, people because they, they had looked the other way, is that pretty much, or they were part of it? Stupid mentality. It's just a stupid mentality. Wow. That's all I can say. And it's uh, I don't know what's going to happen. What well, do you do with a bankrupt? Uh, I mean, do you do you realize that that means that um, services are cut off? I mean, it, the 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 average response time to a police call to a 911 call is over an hour so the people fire so trucks fire, it's running wild fire trucks aren't able to go anywhere anymore because the majority of them aren't even running they can't fix them they break they can't fix them wow it's bad and it's detroit and it's my hometown that's awful. Speaking about sex, what do they call it? Sex texting. Sexting, like texting. You can sexting. tell I do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know you do. You just can't say it. Yes. That's all. <laughs> I've received some. Oh yeah. <laughs> just kidding. So what is up with this? What is this gentleman that just got caught the second, third time, whatever, and the former congressman, former possible mayor or running for mayor of New York City. But, I mean, I don't get this. I guess this is my naiveness of uh, Miss Earthy Crunchy, but mm -hmm. what do people do when they're sexting? I mean, they just send you... <laughs> Are you serious? They Are they say sending dirty... up seeing pictures of themselves? And... Well, I guess they could do that, but, I mean, they talk dirty. It's like... Um... Like calling a... a what is, what's that? Like, like a sex... Calling you know, like the 900 on. numbers? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I don't really do it. I mean, I don't do it. <laughs> I don't <laughs> really do it, kind of. But okay, cla clarify that. <laughs> no, I um, no, I'm. I mean, you know, come on. People can see you turning bright red here, Steve. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's a disadvantage of this, isn't it? <laughs> Whew. Ooh, all of a sudden, he's in a hot flash. <laughs> Here's the stupid thing about uh, people doing these, especially married people, is they're all trackable. And if you go through a divorce, they subpoena your text messages, and everything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. Amazing, yes. Mm -hmm. They know when it was, who you sent it to, where you were. I mean, they just, it's all my, traceable. My text messages were subpoenaed in my divorce. Seriously? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, my, my way ex. Way back then? Uh, yeah, <laughs> way back then. It was four years ago. Dang my on. ex um, hired a private investigator. Um, I didn't know that till I was in court when the, the attorney's holding up pictures of me going into restaurants and, you know. But I, I was thinking they could not use that against somebody if people were you know, you know, not talking about you, but if there's a third party involved, I thought that was not used against people. It is so silly what happens in divorce court. I mean, things that could never fly in criminal court can fly in divorce court. Because I remember saying something like that to my attorney. He says, oh, that doesn't matter. That's like ranked number 17. Judges don't care. Well, you know, judges may or may not care, but I cared. <laughs> I was like, what? Seriously? But, I mean, I didn't think it could be used against a person. 
so it can be. Sure. It sure can. I mean, it can here. It's, I mean, they're trying to show that somebody's having an affair. And they would yeah. then use that against him. So there's no fault divorce, but that doesn't mean um, that when it comes down to divvying up property and money, that there's not going to be a difference. You see what I'm saying? Because I mean, of the it, affair. Right. They, they could say, look, he was having an affair. He was spending thousands on this woman, buying her clothes, taking her to dinner. That should have been uh, the money of his soon-to-be ex. Or if you're a gambler, they'll go, they'll look through your records, they'll find that. They'll say, look, you spent thousands of money, thousands of dollars um, that should have been part of your wife's. Or if you have a drug addiction, they'll, they'll point to that. They will get you in divorce court. And there's no rhyme or reason to how it happens. Because I guess back in the 90s, we didn't have the phones and the texting. So there's really no proof. So it was like one person's word against the other. Yeah, those were the days. Those were the days. Let's bring those back. Wow. Let's get into some good, honest cheating where people can't find you. Can't figure it out unless they walk in on you. That's how it was. That's how, oh my God. Can you imagine that though? Did that ever happen to you? Did you ever walk in on a no. boyfriend? No, but the thing of it is what's amazing to me though, people like all this high technology, but really it gives us less freedom. Totally. Totally. I mean, we, we are so even... tracked now. I mean, every move you make, you're so tracked. Right. Every move. Wow. Every move. The Patriot Act... Um, after the 9-11 and now some of the, uh, the, the acts and laws that Obama has approved, uh, they can, they can look at basically anything they want. You know, there, there is no privacy. When you're on your computer and you're looking around, you're going all over the place. That's another thing. These guys or girls that happen to be surfing these, uh, porn sites or, uh, these whatever sites, the minute they go through divorce, if the wife has an idea about that or the husband has an idea about that, guess what else is subpoenaed? The computer. And now a forensic uh, computer person goes through that and they'll find where you've been. So what they do in some cases to get a settlement, let's say some guy's a real rich dude, right? Mm -hmm. And his wife kind of wants a divorce and she wants the edge and she has an idea her husband's been doing something. Well, let's say that this guy is gay, God forbid. I mean, only God forbid because of the case, not because, I mean, who cares if he's gay or not, right? But right. That, that now if she finds something on the computer that her husband was out there looking at gay porn sites, well, now does he want that to come into court in trial? No. If he's got money, he's going to cut a deal right then and there. Let's get this over with. Give her what she wants. Well, this has a double-edged sword for sure. I mean, talk about your privacy is gone, but then the good part is you'll settle the divorce quick, quickly. Yeah, but at a cost. I mean, that's uh, that's that's crazy. I, that's but, not right. But to me, it can always come back to haunt you. What oh. can? I mean, any of the things that you're doing online, on computer, on your texting. Right. Well, look how many famous men in the history of the world. It's happened to women, too. Some of these school teachers that end up with a young student, and they get in a lot of trouble. But more times than not, the, you know, guys like Clinton, really super powerful men, uh, the history of forever have, have been brought down uh, over some sex scandal. Men just can't say no. <laughs> they just, for the most part, most guys, even guys that are really good fathers and really good husbands, they get out on the wrong night, have a, a couple beers. of too many drinks, some little tenderoni comes up to him and hits on him, and he's like, damn. No, nobody will know. <laughs> I can have that. <laughs> just a quickie. <laughs> I did not have sex with that woman. Love that line of Bill Clinton's, right? His definition of sex. I did not have sex with that woman. 
you know, to me, if you know that so many things can track you, people are taking pictures. To me, you can't even go anywhere with somebody snapping a picture if they needed to. I mean, the great, the benefit, if there's an accident, you can snap pictures or something like that. But the, the downside is that you could be innocently, innocently out there or doing something, whatever, and it could just be misinterpreted or people could be right there taking pictures. Right. There is no privacy. Well, I have an iPhone. And do you have an iPhone? No. You have an Android? Hmm. So I don't know how yours works, but I know mine has a cloud. It's called a photo stream. So every picture I take is automatically up on the wherever every picture so I can I can go to any computer and I can dial into my photo stream account and I get all my pictures not from my I don't even have to have my phone so they're on my phone yes but they're also out there in space for That's anyone the, that could, could anyone get them get to them as well, well you know theoretically Anything's possible when it comes to hacking, right? And if you can hack an account, I mean, you can hack an so account. So wouldn't you think this would prevent affairs or people would be more conscious of that? No, people are, love is blind. Guys think with the wrong head. Yes. It, Get uh, caught up in the lust. And it doesn't matter how rich or how smart you are. We all saw what happened to Tiger Woods. And he was having oh, affairs with <laughs> many, many women, tons, just texting them. You know, that's how his all ended. He was texting one of his girlfriends when his wife grabbed the phone away from him. Well, he had like 12 him. different girlfriends, didn't he, had, having an affair with? Probably more. Yeah. Yes, yeah, probably even more. Yeah. And that's another one of those things. I mean, you're a good-looking guy, you're rich, you've got all these beautiful women coming on to you. What do you do? I mean, you a guy something? with... This might be a little blunt. Of course, my dad's that way. He's a pretty, he's a straight shooter. He was in the Navy. All right, shoot it, girl. Pull your guns out. Let's hear it. And he, he'd say, you know what? I did all the crazy wild things back then. He said, but eventually, but I realized that. And he says maybe it's the same the way women can look at it, but there's a woman is a woman, a man is a man, and this isn't any different. He said, so I'm not going to take a chance or catch a disease or whatever. He said, because it's nothing different. You know, I'm, I'm probably not using the same words that he's using. <laughs> or he yeah, used. I don't think so. I'm trying to keep it clean. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out. A man is a man. A woman is a woman. Nothing. No, but different. I'm saying it's the same for a woman, same for a man. You know, he just said there's nothing different. I mean, the, a woman nothing. is a woman. Oh, oh, so don't tell me he's using my mom's uh, philosophy. My mom used to allow me to have Playboy magazines, all right, when I was a little kid. You know, I don't know how young, in my teens. And, uh, she, and she, <laughs> she'd walk in and she'd see a stack of these and she goes, Stephen, I, I don't know how you can have all of those. I mean, once you've seen one, you've seen them all. Is that what your dad was kind of saying? And I'm saying to your dad and to my mom, God rest her soul. Uh-uh. Not true. No, mom. They are not all the same whatsoever. I I know that because I had that stack that big. I didn't do so well in school, but I studied the crap out of those. I know everything about a woman's body parts and they are not mom all the same or to your dad so well it would be a very interesting conversation if you and my dad had one together on this plus when your dad was making those statements there was no disease right I mean whatever disease there well, they was were around they could cure with, with uh, penicillin right right but they they still had to be careful you know for him he wouldn't you know he's very conscientious of his health and wouldn't want anything to hurt his health or anything for him. You know, he used all the precautions. There's no way he would want to go through any of the treatment because he used to, you know, I guess maybe to scare us back in those days when we were teenagers of the treatments that they would have to do to help you with those or to help you cure those diseases. Really? 
He is pretty you, blunt. <laughs> you're just talking about uh, like VD, syphilis, that kind of stuff. I've never heard of anything really uh, difficult. Uh, just for guys, it was like penicillin or something like that. No, maybe this was. Uh, he was scaring you, Joni. He was scaring you. Probably you trying are. to scare my brother. <laughs> Your brother. They have to take this thing and put it right down the head. You know. Oh. Yeah, that's what he used to say. <laughs> right, I, they have to scrape it out. Oh, Dad, I'll <laughs> never do that. <laughs> <laughs> then two weeks later, oh boy. Things are different back then. They didn't, you know, have HIV or anything like that. But well, we still haven't learned because the one of the largest sectors of people coming down with herpes these days are seniors. I've heard. And the yeah. uh, senior um, living zones, like in Miami, all of these sexy seniors who are 70 or 80, um, they're single and they're living in their condos on the beach and they're meeting their other single neighbors and they're living la vida loca and they're getting a disease. Can you imagine going to your doctor at 75 or 80 and being diagnosed with herpes or crabs <laughs> it's doctors like wow or hiv you know really hiv's changed a lot hasn't it yeah it's i watched a documentary on that the other night and how people were dying i mean i remember back in the 80s i mean it was a death sentence and yeah. now uh, you know most people don't die from it They've got enough drugs and people live through it. It's just another herpes. It's another thing that never goes away. Hmm. So, um, and it makes you wonder too, where does all this money go that we raise for cancer cures, for HIV, for muscular dystrophy? A lot of it's administration. Well, yeah. I mean, you think of billions and billions of dollars though and nothing gets fixed. It begs the question, do they really want to get it fixed? Well, I know they've come through with quite a lot, but that has even been brought up from professionals in the field who have said that in observation of the amount of money raised. Well, if we had Dr. Lichten on the air, he'd be telling us all kinds of scary stories about how big pharma controls what goes on. And the question is, does um, do the pharmaceutical companies really want cures or do they want a pill that people need to take forever. So then HIV is the perfect uh, disease for a pharmaceutical company because they have to take these very expensive pills forever. Mm. Blood pressure, they love it. You're on a pill forever. How about cholesterol? Cholesterol, yeah. How about Viagra? <laughs> well, how about Viagra? <laughs> it's one of the greatest drugs ever. That's what's causing these problems in the sexy senior living places in Miami now. You know, the old guys didn't used to be able to get it up. Now they can. Now they're doing it. Now they're getting diseased. Well, the other thing is, too, back in their days, the 70, if you're 70 and 80 years old, back then your concern was an unwanted pregnancy. Right. So now they think they're safe. So we don't need any protection. Mm hmm Come on over, Mama. <laughs> come over, Mama. <laughs> mother, come here, Mother. You think about guys as they get older, they call their wife Mother. Hello, Mother. <laughs> and, and, and they call them Dad. Here, Dad, can you help me with this, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little sick, a little twisted. Mother, Mother and Dad. So I can see you in your 80s, Steve. You'll be one of those men with his Viagra chasing the women. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, why not? I mean, you know, yeah. if you can, you can. And uh, so I happen to think that Viagra and, and Cialis and all that, the, the other things, whatever, um, I think they're great. I think they also uh, are not so great. I think they're probably one of the reasons why divorce rates in the, uh, the gray category, you know, they call it gray divorce now for people that are over what, 40, 40s, 50s, meaning, you know, gray hair, so they're getting divorced. That's a large segment of the divorce population. So how does that happen? Well, maybe Viagra and these drugs play a role because a lot of the women, who, especially the ones who aren't on hormone replacement therapy, they don't want to have sex anymore. Mm. They don't care. It's not a big deal. And all of a sudden, guys that didn't 
really want to because they couldn't. Now it's like Superman has returned, <laughs> and uh, they want it. And she says, "Not here, not with this, not with me." And then he goes elsewhere. Mm. And there's a young chick, twenty-five, thirty. Who has not had money. babies? <laughs> you, you gotta have money, you know, to get a twenty-five or thirty-year-old. If you're sixty or seventy, you do. I mean, there's really there's no way. When I look at these these younger girls with these older guys, I'm like, really, really. I mean, you, you're into this guy because he's so cute, right? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, women are uh, women are benefiting too. These cougars are out there getting younger guys, and uh, that's all. All okay right now too, right? I think it's wonderful. See, double standard. Mm -hmm. Well, I I wouldn't think of a twenty five year old, but if a person was early fifties or something like that, I wouldn't, you know, or even just younger in general, a couple years, I wouldn't think anything of it. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even, you know, having a son that's almost well, twenty nine. You know, to even think of someone that young, I mean, right. that's... Well, initially, you, you take a look at um, Demi Moore mm -hmm. and Ashton Kutcher. Uh, I mean, she was young. Uh, she was much older than him, but she looked extremely hot when she yeah. was in her late 30s and 40s. And he was a good-looking young kid. And um, so it's easy to see how you could fall in love. I mean, women today in their 40s, oh, my God. They look great. <laughs> they're, they're like, you look at Jennifer Aniston, people like that, you're like, I mean, this girl is hot. Mm. So 40 see, doesn't they, even But they matter. haven't had babies. <laughs> well, some have even, you know, and, and like um, Demi had. Yeah, that's and, right. And, but she was a great looking lady. But now I stay with this lady for another, you know, now she's 50. Five, going on 60 and now you're 35 or 40. Big and, difference. And now you're saying somewhere, uh, just ladies. Well, old. it's the same where, in fact, I my sister had been telling me because she's been dating a lot and she was dating some, she just turned 60. So she, in fact, she'll be 61, but she was dating some men like in their late 60s. And she said, I don't want to go there. She's, and she is a nurse by her profession. And she's a nurse. And she said they are looking for a nurse. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> for future. <laughs> for the future. And she said, you know, if they have any kind of health issues, they, oh, you're a nurse? Oh, <laughs> that's a that's a benefit. Oh, great! <laughs> you can take care of me. And you're See, younger. when you're when you're younger, when you're in your like twenties and thirties, uh, when you're at a bar, you call your uh, waitress nurse. Yeah. <laughs> nurse, get another drink, please. And <laughs> and now you get older, you really need the real nurse. Nurse. Oh, the the apartment complex I live in now, they they it, it's a large complex, so there's a lot of these six-story buildings. And they took one whole building, and they turned it into a senior building now. And they redesigned the entire building. They have uh, a big, large passenger van that will take these people to, like, Meijer to do their grocery shopping once a week. Takes them to, you know, it has a schedule of when you can go. It has a big built-in movie theater that, with popcorn machines that you can go down there and, and watch some uh, old Cary Grant movies or something. And um, it has a, a doctor's office inside the, the complex, wow. and it has a pharmacy where they'll deliver your pills right to your room. And it has a huge dining room where they serve you two meals a day. Same building as I'm in. They just redecorated it for uh, sexy seniors. So um, That's incredible. Yeah. I went over there to look at it, and the young girl who was showing it to the sexy seniors was the one that showed me my apartment, and she's actually trying to talk me into being there. She's like, see, this is really nice. Would you like? And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> I mean, is seriously. Would you be the, the woman would love you, Steve? <laughs> uh, I mean, I was, I was hurt. <laughs> I was like, she thought 
Really? I, oh, come oh, on. Nothing I, don't need for, to... I bet you she's just needing to fill a quota. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but but come on. I mean, yeah. Oh, group movie night. Well, pharmacy can bring my Viagra right to my room. Well, I like that idea. That's good. <laughs> um, yeah, that sounds good. Mostly bad. I, you, know. you don't have to worry about cooking. Your meals are all done for you. Right. Can you imagine what that's going to taste like? Oh. I know. My former mother-in-law, she's so sweet. She's like my mom and... She's in a home, assisted living. Mm -hmm. She had been moved upstairs about a year ago because of her Alzheimer's. And that's exactly what they do. They have the movie nights. They have the big cafeteria, so to speak. They show up at, you know, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm. Yeah, I think it's great for people that need it. I was just a little offended that this young You're not girl. quite there yet. That I so there. we'd love to get some feedback from our listeners. This is going to be going on YouTube. In fact, it should be on YouTube. Oops, sorry. Oh, you're gonna play something? Go. No, I was. Go ahead. Talk, talk. No, I was gonna say. So this is gonna be going on YouTube, so people can get to see what we're doing. Then we will learn more about how people can call in and ask us questions, or the even, or even if we can get people to send us questions more and more. On Facebook, but I don't. But maybe someone doesn't want to send it out so everyone can read it. How can I don't they... know. Um, I don't know. I'll look into it. So I'm going to say they can email you, but maybe they can email me directly. But as well. Can't they? Can't they message through Facebook? They can message. Yes, they can. All right. Do you have a special so, song to play? You can't hear anything in the background. Okay. Yeah, no, that's just, it's called the rap music. And normally I do it in post-production, but I can't because this is it. And you're going to get ready to hit that stop button so we don't sit around looking like a bunch of fools when we say goodbye, right? Right? You can talk. I can talk. I, uh, if you're ready to say go or say goodbye, let's say goodbye. And All right, so we're, we're going to do that, but tell them where they can get a hold of you. If you want to send in your questions for the show, email me directly. It's jw at joewinder.com. Or, or go to our Facebook page. Either one. At facebook.com slash single again now what? Or you can always write us through divorce source radio at gmail.com. Either one. We'd love All to right. hear from you. So there's the wrap, and uh, I'll fade up on the music, and then I'll fade down, and you can shut it off when I fade down. So bye, everyone. Thanks for the test. This is a test. This is only a test. Have a good week. Bye-bye.